the under celebrated 20th century women nationalist of Nigeria. The very important women in Nigeria's history, especially the women who did far more between 1900 to 1960, indeed beyond 1960, than the men who later boxed in the glory of governance and history, are many and their names, to mention a few like Fumilaya Ransom Kuti, Margaret Epo, Alimo Tupele Wura, Mama Aduni, Ladi Kwali, Flora, Mwakpa, Buchi, Mecheta, Mebe Shekun, Nana Asmao, and a host of many authors deserve to be written down more boldly and legibly. They deserve more than just a passing mention. History must celebrate these fearless and stereotype defying Amazons. I will start this series with the Iyaloja number no. one. Ali Motu Pele Wura. Chief Ali Motu Pele Wura, 1865-1951, was a Nigerian trader who was leader of the Lagos Market Women's Association, a Lagos-based market women advocacy group. She was also an important political ally of Abbott Macaulay. Indeed, far more important than Inamdi Azikwe, that Abbott Macaulay ultimately anointed to succeed him because Pelewura was not only gender disadvantaged but she was illiterate. However, the Lagos Market Women's Association that she led was one of the most important women's organizations in, in Lagos and Nigeria in general during the colonial period. Pelewura was born in Lagos to a large polygamous family. She was the elder of two children born by a biological mother. Her mother was a fishmonger, Yeleja as we often call them, and Pelewura, as it was the wound in those days, also chose fish trading as an occupation. By 1900, she had become an important leader of the market women and traders. In 1910, was given a chieftaincy title by Oba Eshubayi Eleko, who himself was a radical Oba of Lagos that was humiliated and dethroned by the colonial administration, but had to be reinstated because downtrodden Lagosians adored him and the Privy Council of the House of Lords, Nine Kingdom Supreme Court then ruled that he be reinstated. In the 1920s, he was leader of the Ereko Meat Market and with the support of Herbert Macaulay, she rose to become the leader of the newly formed Lagos Market Women Association. She belonged, she belonged to the Awari tribe, the Aboriginal owners of Lagos, of Europe. The Lagos Market Women's Association, LMWA, was founded in the 1920s by Kwele Wura and a few other market leaders. Pele Wura, a fish trader, was the alaga, that is chair, of the Eroko market, and she became the association's founding leader. During her reign, LMWA protested against imposed taxation and price control of produce. Both incidents, she believed, would impact negatively on the livelihood of her members in particular and women in general. In 1932, Pelewura led market women in protest against direct taxation of women by the colonial government when rumors surfaced about the proposed tax on women. She was a member of the Committee of Women that marched to the government house in protest against the proposed punitive fiscal policy. In the same year, due to her leadership of the protest, she was appointed as the women's representative in the Lu Committee an advisory group of the good and the great of Lagos who, during the Begig Bebo crisis, stood in support of Oba Shuba Yeleko, for which the young and ambitious Oba Macaulay was crying. In the mid-1930s, she led a protest against the relocation of the Ereko market to the Oluwale area of Lagos. Pele Wura and some Ereko women attempted to physically block any relocation action by authorities, which led to her detention. The market women in Lagos rallied in her, in her support, and she and other women detainees were released. In 1940, the colonial government proposed a new taxation plan on women who earned above 50 pounds per annum. Female taxation was changed to Yoruba land, and the women against, again rose in protest. Pelewura and other women objected because of its novelty 
and also because of the challenging economic difficulties, such as high unemployment rate as a result of the World War II. Though not many market women amongst the 8,000 plus members of her organization earned above 50 pounds per annum, she felt it could be a slippery slope towards full taxation of women. However, on taxation of women, the colonial government did not budge, but responded by increasing the taxable income to those earning more than 200 pounds per annum from the initial threshold of 50 pounds. In 1939, Pele Wura became an executive member of the Nigerian Union of Young Democrats, a youthful party that was closely aligned with the Albert Macaulay's Nigerian National Democratic Party, NNDP. She was, even more than Albert Macaulay, the person that most NNDP rally goers wanted to see take the rostrum and speak. Most NNDP candidates always wanted her to publicly lead their campaigns, even even though, paradoxically, women were disenfranchised. She was also briefly a member of the Onyekon Abayomi led Nigerian Women's Party. Kwele Wura died in 1951. She was succeeded by one of her followers, Chief Abiba Tumogaji, the mother of President Bola Tinumbu, who, more so during Nigeria's military interregna, also became an intrepid voice for democracy and good governance. In conclusion, how, like a limo to Pele Wura and Abiba to Mogaji, are you daily resisting the many frustrating handicaps of gender, inadequate Western education, and lonely birth to redefine the quality of life of the mass of humanity around you? And that's it for tonight. I am Gola Oba. Have a good night.